Welcome back, Sports Tonight on Channels Television. We're broadcasting live from our sports center in Lagos, Nigeria. We're taking a look at what's going on with sports, uh, particularly as it concerns Nigerian athletes. We started with Georgia Obo. She was so close to qualifying for the British Women's Open, but she missed out by just three shots. It's okay. She didn't get in, um, but it's a good experience for that young teenage sensation. She has done so well for herself and Nigeria playing golf, and we hope that someday her hard work will pay off. I also told you uh, that the D Tigress, they are set uh, to defend their title at the 2019 Afro Basket Championship that will take place in Dakar, Senegal. They are getting ready right here in Lagos uh, before leaving for the championship that will uh, dunk off on August the 7th in Dakar, Senegal. I also told you uh, badminton in Nigeria is doing so well, and one person that is contributing to it is Doc Asadeshoko. She's the number one badminton player in Nigeria. She said, look, I didn't win at the just-concluded international classics, but it was good experience, not just for Dukas at the come, but also other Nigerian players. So we're showing the women so much love tonight on the show. And then I told you, the Black Stallions, they will be playing uh, at the Rugby Invitationals in Ghana. They will take on Ivory Coast tomorrow, 12 noon. Nigerian time, that's when we go down. The coach has said he wants to see fast-paced rugby. The team needs to show the quality that they can qualify for the Africa Cup and then book a place for the qualifiers for the Olympics in South Africa. So uh, that's what got, really got us talking. Yesterday on the show, I highlighted um, the development of cycling in Nigeria. We just concluded the Africa Track Cup in cycling. It's the maiden edition, and Nigeria dominated by winning 21. Now, listen, 21 gold medals. Egypt, that was our second on the table, could only get eight gold medals. So, are we a cycling nation? Uh -huh. So, because someone say, ah, no, 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 we're not good in that. But you need to do more. You need to invest. It has to be all right. For instance, that's the velodrome right there at the Abuja National Stadium. And look at how good it looks. So, with proper maintenance, it can be better. And more persons will pick interest. Because, I mean, I mean I'm family without infrastructure, you can't achieve development. Austin, this is really beautiful. Yeah. What I'm saying right now looks like I'm looking at um, a velodrome in England or say France or, mm. or, 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 or Spain. And for me, I think it's a good one. If we can sustain this momentum, if we can sustain this kind of Tony, then for instance, Nigeria won 22 gold medals. That is awesome. unprecedented. Awesome. Uh, for, for me, it's a good one. At and the maiden edition. We, we all know Egypt mm. to be, to be a, very a big dominant. force yeah, yeah. in cycling. And now Nigeria has overtaken Egypt. Mm. Uh, it, it, it's a good one. We just hope that they sustain this momentum. That's what it is. Organization is key. Mm -hmm. And administration too. And look at that. Persons came out to watch. The fans are, and look how cheering their team. Yes. Look, but, if, but if they go to the, to the venue and it's not... Well kept and there's no good place and it's to sit ugly. Down. You will not have you will <laughs> not you know stay there. So you see it's not see, just not just for, Nigerians. For, for, for the site you see we can also see, see you know some foreigners out there also. The fans were, were, were pumped up with the level of uh, competition that they saw and level of and the quality that the cyclists also displayed. We talked about this yesterday and we'll keep talking about it so you get to know that it is what you sow, you reap. So Austin, the could those most go to mm -hmm. the cycling federation? They really yeah. did a good job yeah. with this. Yeah. But the, yeah. the prayer now is <laughs> <I like laughs> they that. should, yeah, yeah, they should yeah. sustain this because yeah. if this continues, then we'll be a super force in cycling in Africa for a very long time. And who knows? Yeah. You know, on the world stage, we might just launch, yeah. you know. Uh, our uh, cycling prowess. The president of the Nigeria Cycling Federation, Mr. Masari, uh, he wasn't happy. He said, look, with what we've seen at this championship and Nigeria uh, dominating Africa, we're not going to see cycling at the African Games. He said it's not good for the sport. The president of the African Cycling Confederation, Dr. Mohamed Azam, is also reacting after the inaugural edition of the Africa Track Cup. Let's listen to him. We'll be right back. The most important is not only the first edition of the African Cup that we organize big event of Africa in the Velodrome of Abuja. You know, I was here uh, since 2003, establishment of this, uh, uh, of this Velodrome. From 2003 until now, nothing. But now uh, we create the new event to do it in, uh, in Abuja. This number one, congratulations for the opening of the Velodrome to, uh, to make a, a big event for Africa. Number two, I think the number of participation of countries, nine countries to participate, 
in the first edition of African Cup for track in Africa, it is full su good success. Number three, also the number of events. If you look for the number, many number of events. Uh, we, we, the championships or the cup, we organized more than uh, 35 events. It means that it is a very, very big uh, event in, in Nigeria. So that's it, the president of the Confederation of African Cycling, Dr. Mohamed Azam. It's a good thing. Uh, we, we see some of the sports that are really used for leisure, and then you wonder why they're not so big. Everyone just jumps on a, on a bicycle, and then people enjoy cycling. <laughs> but you wonder that why is it not particular? Not Nigeria now, Africa. It's what they should come together. I'm glad that he's around. He has seen it, that has the potential. Maybe they will come back again. But it's a clear eye-opener that they need to do more for the development of the sport. Of course, it is a, a big eye-opener. And quite unfortunate, this uh, competition will not uh, 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 be featuring at the All-African uh, Games. So and uh, now that the spirit is so high, yeah. you know, uh, Nigerians wouldn't have that chance you know, to, to, to prove to the world mm. you know, the, the, the stuff they are made of. It's, it's quite unfortunate. But then, if this tournament is sustained, you know, who knows, maybe the next All-African Games, you know, it will be included. And then Nigerians can now go there. To, to, to show the whole world that Nigeria is now a cycling nation. That's right. So that's it. We'll continue to monitor the development of cycling in Nigeria and Africa. Let's bring the discussion back home now, uh, talking about athletics in Nigeria. Athletics used to be so, so big. Yeah, I used to uh, in Nigeria. We've got some top class athletes. They're doing so well. One of them, Blessing Okagbari, another, Toby Loba Amusong. You can go on and on to mention. Divine Oduduru, Sheye Ogunlewe, loads of them that are doing so well. Esther Brume is one of them. She's an African champion when you talk about uh, the jumps, the long jump to be precise. And she has qualified for the World Championships and the Olympics. And Esther Brume is looking forward to a fantastic season uh, this year after uh, jumping a personal best of 6.96 meters at the Ezurum Challenge Cup in Turkey, and that was where she also qualified for the Olympics. Let's go to Famagusta. It's in northern Cyprus. That's where Essie Brume is based. Essie, good to have you on Sports Tonight. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome. That tiny voice, I miss it. Good to have you on the show. Essie, tell me, it, it's, been, it's been so good for you already. And what's doing it for you in 2019? Sorry, I didn't get that. I said, it's looking like a good season for you already. What's responsible for the success that you've recorded so far in 2019? It's hard work. I would say it's hard work and dedication. That's what I have to say. <laughs> Before you, uh, no, before you went to uh, Turkey, uh, what was on your mind? Was it just going there to do your thing or you said to yourself you need to go there and use that championship to qualify for the Olympics? My target was to go there to qualify for the Olympics mm. and also to keep me in good form and also in check mm. for the season. Mm. Esther, you're also in school and doing all of this work for uh, your career and also for your country. Uh, tell me, how difficult has it been? What are some of the challenges being in school and still being a professional athlete? Uh, I would say that right now it's not that difficult. So at first, from my first year, it was because I was here alone. Not until um, the, uh, we brought my coach here. Because it was impossible for me to train alone. But now I'm, I'm, I'm able to balance up everything, and uh, my coach is supporting me really well. So everything is okay now, it's fine. Mm. You just. I'm not struggling with it. Mm. It's good to know that your coach is there giving you support. The Federation, the, the, the Federation, what have they done so far? The Federation, the Ministry of Sports, what have they done for Este Brume as we get ready for the African Games? Um, they've done nothing. <laughs> I haven't heard. I haven't heard from them, and they've done nothing. I'm just here preparing on my own and hoping that um, they are able to do something for us because um, we've worked hard through this moment and we've spent a lot in order to prepare for this season, and we are hoping that we get. Um, they meet our demand, actually. Hmm. Your demands. 
Tell, tell what, what, are, what are the demands? Because the, uh, the African Games is just next month in Rabat, Morocco. And if you're telling me that the Federation has not reached out, the Ministry of Sport, that they've not done anything, uh, what should we be expecting from Team Nigeria in Rabat, Morocco? Um, the thing is, <laughs> the ball is on their foot. And also, um, because the last time, I think they um, tried to, they gave out training grounds of, um, I think, around um, $5,000. Because, yeah, I think around $5,000. But um, that's too small for us, actually. Mm. Because we spent a lot, a lot to prepare for the season. We spent more than that. Mm. Yeah, because we have to take care of our health, our, our therapy, um, our diet, stuff like that. Mm. And also, we have to prepare. Like for me, for example, I, I kind of like had challenges to get visa to travel because of um, school, because everything fell during my, um, during my exams. Mm. So I had to look for ways to go get um, competitions that are close by in Turkey so I could compete to qualify mm. in order to so that I'm working here. Wow. And doing so, I have to spend a lot. Wow, I know, I know. So, uh, despite all of these challenges, S.C. Brume, tell me, uh, what's your target for the African Games and the World Championships? Um, I'll say that my target is to do better than my PB per thing. We have to, I have to get support for me to do that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, know. I, I, I feel you. It, 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 you, you it's getting, it, it sounds is a broken record when we get to speak to athletes and everyone is saying the same thing. It's okay for you to laugh about it. Uh, you've qualified for the Olympics. How does that make you feel? I'm excited about it because this will be my second Olympics. I remember uh, we talked at the Rio 2016 Olympics and you told me that the next time you have a chance to go to the Olympics that you're going to do better and, and you weren't so bad at Rio 2016 so going to Tokyo 2020 should we be expecting a medal from Esse Brume? Eh? I'm hoping so by the grace of God and I'm working so hard I'm, I'm, I'm working hard towards it myself and my coach and I hope that we get our target by the grace of God that's a good way to end this interview thank you so much Esse Brume, for your time all the best with school all the best with the jumps and uh, hopefully Against all odds, you go to the African Games, the World Champions, and even the Olympics, and then reach your targets. Thank you so much. Thank you, Esther. Thank you. So that's it. African Long Jump Champion, Esther Brume. Esther has been doing so, so well. Look, we'll get to the, to, the, to the male athletes from next week, just so you will see that the athletes are doing their part. Federation and ministry, the country must also do it's part. So, so that's Esther Brumer with, with, with Long Jump. And um, it's a beautiful story whenever I talk to them. I talked to Toby Loba last week. It was a beautiful story. She's, she's breaking records. Bless her, Kagbari. You know the story. She caught fire this year again. Esther Brumer, the same thing. But days to a major African championship, and they're saying nothing, nothing from the Federation or the Ministry. Uh, the story is pathetic, Austin. Um, um, one of the reasons the foreign-based um, athletes you know, refused to pa uh, participate at the trials yeah. was because they complained that they are being old. And S.A. Brume has just confirmed that tonight. It's quite unfortunate. These are uh, uh, people that have given Nigeria glory you know, in time past. Look at S.A. Brume. I have monitored her from the Junior Championship to, uh, she's gone through the ranks, Junior Championship, All African Games where she won gold, uh, the last Olympics. I think she got to the final, but didn't make it to the mm. uh, uh, to, to the medal uh, uh, podium. Uh, it, 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 that shows her kind of spirit, her kind of talent, and you know, you know what um, an SA Brume can bring to the table. I yeah. just want to urge you know the government, uh, the ministry, sport ministry, um, AFN to look into their plight. Then yeah. the, the, the money the money is owed them. You know, has to be paid, and the time is now. Yeah. I think so. I think so. And it goes beyond just paying athletes money. There must be a proper welfare program in place because that's motivation right there. So, um, 
It is what it is. Nigeria, we go to the African Games, but it's the same fire brigade approach. And then we go there, when Kenya starts doing well, South Africa starts doing well, we start wondering. But it's long-term planning for those guys. And that's why they always get the results. So um, we've called it all sorts of things. We say it's the Nigerian spirit, the one good competition. They do well despite not preparing properly. But hey, that's not what it is. That's not what it is. Bless Nakagbari. Uh, last week, she couldn't hide the feelings anymore. She said, look, we, should, we shouldn't be putting persons that know nothing about sports in sports administration. <laughs> that it's about time. It's about time we start doing the right things. And these are the athletes. These are the persons that go out there, sweat, work so hard to win medals for the country. It might just be one little administrative lap that the medal will not come. It may be to, to Austin, be gold, Austin, to be I remember silver. we've lost so many mm. athletes to um, 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 other countries. And we'll lose more. Um, Obikwilu. Um, when they are even established. Uh, uh, yes, you know, at some they, point, they left live. Nigeria for Spain. Yeah. It's it, it, it unfortunate. Yeah. But then, these are one of the reasons why these at, uh, athletes you know, leave our shores yeah. for other countries. It is, I agree. It is. Ah, it's quite disappointing, but it is what it is. And um, until the problem is solved, it is a problem. We'll, we'll try to uh, bring these athletes to you, so they talk to you. You see that they're doing their part. We'll also talk to the Federation, um, find out how they're getting ready for the African Games. That one is just weeks away in Rabat, Morocco. We should be hearing that. Look, they're going to unveil the team. Well, the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, after the national trials, unveiled... Um, disclosed 51 athletes that will go to the games, but there should be more as a country. This is Nigeria. We should, we should be dominating in terms of branding, packaging, telling persons that Nigeria is coming. We will go there. We will win medals, I know. And, but that doesn't mean that we're winning uh, with development. So much to talk about. Uh, we'll stay with athletics. A major problem with athletics recently is doping, WADA. Uh, the World Anti-Doping uh, Agency, they are doing so, so much to make sure that athletes stay clean when they, when they get to you and you test positive, you're stripped of medals, and a lot of work has been done to also educate athletes on the need to stay clean. Kenya, for instance, um, is one country that uh, they do so well with athletics. And um, we know when WADA was coming out with all of these talks, they said, look, they are coming for Kenya next. Uh, Kenya said more needs to be, do, to, more needs to be done in terms of anti-doping and i think i agree with them yeah for me i think um, i want to agree with them too because um at least they've got to stay clean mm. i i know what doping has done to um some athletes the likes of marion jones justin mm. kathleen mm. in fact it's it practically ruined uh, marion jones career justin kathleen you know struggled to come back so i i, I think athletes they've been sensitized enough to know that doping is not good for them it's not good for their system you spike your system now and then come back to haunt you at the end of the day yeah. so uh, athletes they need to stay clean not just right. in kenya even in nigeria and mm. other countries you know participating in athletics I totally agree. Let's, let's listen to uh, officials of Kenya saying, look, there needs to be more uh, in terms of anti-doping. By last week, we had done 1,200 uh, tests. So we are, we are going towards uh, uh, reaching our target of 1,500. So that means we are able to, we've, we've been able to do much more tests, which is an assurance even to our um, competitors outside there. In terms of ethics, we want to expose them to know that it's wrong to cheat, that it is good to compete. Even if you don't win, it's still fair. You've allowed the person who is stronger than you to win uh, without using anything, any method or any substance to be able to overtake him and win when you are actually cheating. So we have sensitization workshops ourselves, even, even in our boardroom here. We invite officers from the um, anti-corruption, ethics and anti-corruption agency to come and sensitize our staff. We need to do more tests, we need to do more education, and we need to, to get less of the positive cases that we have. Because the, the issue is um, we have done sufficient on the ground, but we still have problems with uh, athletes who are competing outside there. 